Today, we are blessed with the presence of the Tudor Pelagos 42 millimeters. And I'm gonna be talking a little bit about this perfect diving watch and why I would pick this model over the 39 millimeter. Welcome back to Time in the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always. And when Drew put this watch on my desk, I thought it deserved another Time in the Wrist episode. It's been far too long since we've done that, done one. And I think the reason why I thought this watch deserved a Time in the Wrist episode is because I also looked and held the Tudor Pelagos 39 about two weeks ago. And I honestly would pick this over the 39. But let's begin by reviewing this watch, going over all the specs that you need to know. And then at the end, we will cover why I would pick this model instead of the 39. This model comes in at 42 millimeters in diameter and it goes to 500 meters underwater. It's waterproof to 500 meters. So it is a hefty hunk of a watch. The thickness, according to our old, our old trusty digital calipers here, comes in, I believe, at 14.2 millimeters in thickness. So it is quite a thick sturdy watch but remember that it does go to water to, into the water to 500 meters it's waterproof to 500 meters so it's going to have to be a little bit more hefty a little bit more chunky also to add to that you can see the helium escape valve on the left hand side just here the case on this model is satin brushed and it's actually a hybrid between stainless steel and titanium and the bracelet is pretty much full titanium. But what this has that the Tudor Pelagos 39mm doesn't have is a little bit of weight, a little bit of heft. When you put this on your wrist, you know that you have something substantial on your wrist. You have a tool watch on your wrist. And I feel like this is one of the big differences between this model and the 39 millimeter model. But I'll talk a bit more about that in the end of the video. Both the case and the bracelet are in satin brushed metal, titanium and I suppose from the case, titanium slash steel. The reason that I love this for a tool watch is tool watches are designed to be used in the environment that they were designed to be used in. So this is a diving model. It should be used for diving. And obviously when you are diving, you'll probably hit this off of stuff. And when you hit this off of stuff, it will scratch. Now, titanium is a harder metal than steel. So that's one point. But the fact that it's brushed means it won't show scratches as much as polished steel does. I love polished watches. They're very dressy to me. My Grand Seiko in particular is highly, highly polished. But due to this, it's showing scratches so much more than brushed steel or brushed titanium does which is a bit of a nightmare. I really don't like seeing those scratches. The bracelet on this model remains quite robust. It remains quite thick and I quite like that. It gives it a tool watch feel at its core. It tapers in really slightly just for style, but it doesn't taper in too much. And I'm a fan of this. It also has a safety latch just here and then the clasp opens just like this. But what you can also see on the clasp is the micro adjustments just here. And this is because it can be fitted exactly to your wrist size. Or if you're putting this over a wetsuit, if you're going diving with this model, it can be fitted exactly to your wetsuit wrist size. As covered before, on the left-hand side of this watch, you have a helium escape valve for when you go to those depths that you need that, if you need that. And also it has a screw down crown to support this. What I like about this crown is it's really easy to turn without being over accentuated, over aggressive, shall we say. Sometimes you get crowns on these diving models that are just a little bit too pointy, a little bit too big, and they dig into your wrists when you bend your wrists. This doesn't do that. It is quite flat, quite short, quite stubby, but I think I prefer that. Another two tiny little details before we get into the bezel and the face of this watch is that the helium escape valve on the left hand side actually says gas valve and escape or gas escape valve. That's probably the way that you read it. So it says that on it just in case you didn't know. And also the crown of this watch has a raised Tudor shield logo and it actually feels really nice to touch. The bezel on this model is a unidirectional rotatable bezel in titanium. It's graduated over 60 minutes with ceramic matte blue disc and graduations with white luminescent material. 
And on that note, we need to pause this video to bring to you our biggest giveaway yet. This is the 20K giveaway. It is a Tissot PRX light green, which in my opinion is the most attractive Tissot PRX out. And all you need to do for your chance to win is firstly, hit that subscribe button. Secondly, comment with what is on your wrist today. And thirdly, head to our Chism Hunter Watches Instagram page and drop us a follow. Thank you guys so much for supporting this channel. It is truly heartwarming and this it's my gift to you. Now the white numeral and arrow and, and sort of indices on the bezel are so readable against that dark blue color. And also when you get to the titanium, it's a little bit darker than stainless steel as a metal. It's always been that way. That is what titanium is. If you look at titanium against stainless steel, you'll see that it has a darker aesthetic. And this all plays in a combination of ways to make that dial stand out that little bit more and make the numerals and the text and the time easier to read. The teeth on this bezel are actually very, very similar to the Black Bay Heritage that I have on at the moment. The bezel remains very easy to turn, but has quite a firmness to it, quite, quite a sturdiness to it, which I quite like. And also the actual noise, I'll play it here. The actual noise of the bezel, it sounds pretty cool. Diving straight into that dial, and as I've said before guys, this comes in a black dial or a blue dial, so you can kind of just take your pick. If you want to see them side by side on your wrist, head to the Chisholm Hunter website. We've just introduced a very cool thing where you can pretty much take a photo of your wrist and the watch is photoshopped automatically by a sort of AI or machine onto your wrist, exactly the sizes that it would come in at. So you can see the watch without coming into store, which is pretty awesome. It honestly has about four layers of depth. Firstly, you have that three o'clock date window, which is very, very readable against that dial because it's in white, it's white against blue. They're pretty contrasting. The only color that's probably better than that for in terms of contrast is, is black. And it also comes in black if you want that. Then you have that inner ring, that inner kind of disc that's sitting in there. Then above that, you have the hands and the hour markers. Then above that, you have that kind of radial gradient um, of an inner bezel that you can read as well. So there's just so much depth. There's so much going on in that dial. But enough of talking about it. Let's show you guys this beautiful loom. And I honestly would argue that the loom on this model is the brightest loom I've seen on a Tudor apart from the Black Bay Pro. That was a beautiful loom. But now let's take a look at the weight of this model. And the weight of this model is quite interesting. Remember that this has all the links. Every single link is on this watch. And it comes in according to our digital scales that we have in the office at 149 grams. Now the interesting thing about this is that the 39 mil Pelagos comes in at 107 grams. That's almost 40 to 50 gram difference depending on if you take links out of the Pelagos or have it on the rubber strap. That's a big difference. And on that note, one thing that I love about this Pelagos that actually I would change about my Black Bay is that the dot of loom on the bezel, at the top of the bezel, in that arrow, is actually embedded into the bezel. It's not raised. Now, when you look at my Black Bay model that I have on, the Heritage ETA version, the Burgundy version, the loom rock has actually been hit out of, of the watch. Um, basically, I, I think I hit it off a rock. I was hiking, hit it off a rock. That's a common theme amongst my watch collection. Not my fault, but it's just something that I would change. And with that said, what is on your wrist today? It's time for the Chisholm Hunter tradition, which is of course the wrist check. I of course have this model on my wrist. It's been with me for five to six years. Absolute beauty. I love seeing all the weird and wonderful watches you guys have on your wrist. So please let me know in the comments. And while you're at it, if you could subscribe, I'd appreciate it. The movement on this model is the caliber MT5162. It is totally in-house from Tudor and is COSC certified. Now we actually looked up quite a few articles on this watch and quite a, a few reviews on this watch and also did some testing ourselves and it achieves above 40% COSC certification. So it's sort of 40% above COSC certified. It's not quite meta certified, but it's 40% above COSC, which is pretty, pretty awesome. It also has a 70 hour power reserve. Right, we've covered all the basics about this Tudor Pelagos. We've covered the weight, we've covered the movement, we've covered the specs, we've covered the measurements. But why would I gravitate towards this model instead of the 39 millimeter variant when I have 6.5 inch wrist, which is pretty slim? Here's the thing. When I got the 39 millimeter variant 
the Tudor Pelagos 39 behind the camera naturally gravitated onto my wrist, don't know how it got there, and it just felt a little bit too light to me. Now, I'm a huge fan of titanium watches. I've said this in, in multiple reviews. I really want a titanium watch, but probably in 40 or above, because when it gets to the 39 mark, it's just a little bit too light, and I like something substantial on my wrist. And this combination, the Tudor Pelagos 42 combination between steel and uh, titanium on the head of the watch makes it a little bit heavier. Another detail is that the 42 millimeter variant of the Pelagos is waterproof to 500 meters, whereas the 39 millimeter variant is only waterproof to 200 meters which is a pretty substantial difference. Now, I am no diver by any means, but when you're looking for a tool watch, you're looking for that watch to be able to do this kind of stuff. The Tudor Pelagos 42 millimeters comes in at 3,750 pounds, whereas the Tudor Pelagos 39 comes in at 3,500 pounds. But there's a lot of differences to consider. Now, I don't want to go over all of them because we're going to do an overarching versus video. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments. But I just feel that this model, it demands more respect. I think this model is more of a tool watch. And personally, I just prefer it. Listen, these are just a couple of points that I sort of, uh, that sort of bubbled up to the front of my brain, but there's tons more to speak about. And actually I might, I'll do a separate video on the whole thing. I really hope this helped you make your decision, but I'd like to hear your opinion. Would you go with the 39 or would you go with the proper tool watch, the 42 millimeter Pelagos? I do think both are fantastic, but I'm just drawn to the 42. Thank you so much for watching this Chisholm Hunter Time in the Wrist video. My name is Harrison, as always. If you've enjoyed, honestly, I would really appreciate it if you can hit that subscribe button. Follow our Instagram, Chisholm Hunter Watches. We post loads of behind the scenes content and I'll see you in a couple of days.